Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. Today's video is sponsored by the nice folks at Starbond. Let me show you why I like working with them so much. Starbond offers a great variety of products. They come in thin, medium, thick. They also have some colored CA glues. The latest one is white. They also have brown and black. And what I like is whenever you're ordering CA glue from them, you know that it's always fresh. And if you store it in a refrigerator, it will last you at least a year and a half. I always date my glue when I first get it. And with some of these darker labels, I can't write on them, you can't see. So what I do is just put on a little masking tape label on it and write the date on it. And the reason for putting a date on is not so that you know whether the glue is good or not. The reason for the date is to tell you how old it is because once it starts getting old, you're probably going to want to replace it. But the way that you can tell if the CA glue is good is when you turn it like this, if it flows and you can see even the dark through there, you can see when it flows like that, it's good. Now I have a board at a little bit of an angle here and I want to show you the different consistencies of all of these different CA glues and the penetration into wood. So let's start off with the thin and you'll be able to see how runny that that is. And it also soaks into the wood fairly quickly. This is the medium thick. And the last one is the thick. Here's a great way of using CA glue to apply hinges. And the way this works is I just put a dab of glue on there. You don't need very much. Now on the back of the hinge, I'm just going to use some accelerator and just spray a little bit on the back. And now I can use that hinge and I've got it marked where I want it to go. And now I can just drop that right down on top and look at that, it's already aligned and that's not, it's stuck on there. It's not going to go anywhere and now I can drill the holes and that's all ready to go. I'm going to show you how you can make your own woodworking rasp. Now this is mine here, it's a few years old and if it looks brand new it is. And the reason is it's just so aggressive that I hardly ever get a chance to use it. But what really works well is making your own wood rasp and you can use that by using a very coarse sandpaper. In my case I'm using an 80 grit and it works just great. Now you've probably heard of this before where we apply double-sided tape on there and then you can do the same thing by putting that sandpaper on there. That doesn't work and the reason it doesn't work is because the double-sided tape does not withstand the pressure of sanding like that. So what we're going to do today I'm going to use, you could use a choice of this, you could use a thick or a medium for that. Today I'm going to be using the thick glue and what I'm going to do is just put a bead of glue along that and you can actually see that I made a mark on the wood here where I want the glue to end and I'm going to be using some poly thyrene gloves. These are CA safe. You can't use vinyl gl gloves with CA glue. And all I'm going to do is just take this and spread that with my finger and just spread that thick glue along there. And because it's thick, it doesn't dry right away. Now I can take that glove off and on the back of the sandpaper, I'm going to take that and spritz the back of the sandpaper. And now I can take that and lay that on there carefully and line that up like that. And that is solid on there already. You can use that right away and you can put as much pressure on that as you want. That 
sandpaper will stay on there until it absolutely wears out and all this is is a scrap piece of wood you probably have this laying around your shop now and you can make your own handy rasps at whatever grit you want to use and get excellent results so what I'm showing you here are a variety of four different woods and all of these woods and almost every other wood have the same thing in common and all of these have knots I've got fir, I have alder, I have walnut, and I have maple here. And all of them have knots. And you'll notice in every case, the knots are all darker than the wood that they grow on. And the rule of thumb is when you're filling voids or knots, is you always go darker than the wood that they're sitting on. For filling knot holes and cracks, Starbond has three products that you would typically choose. A medium, which is a light brown, a medium thick, which is a medium brown, and a black. And there are some examples of what the three are. So that's medium, medium thick, and black. Now before I show you the proper way to fill cracks and voids, what I want to show you is what not to do and why. The first thing you don't want to do is use clear. And when you're using it, unless you've got a big crack, um, you'll want to use a tip. Don't use the, the end of the tube like this because what happens, you can see I'm getting a big globby mess on there. And when that dries, what's going to happen is it leaves a lump on there. And when you bring your random orbital sander to try and sand that off, what happens is the glue is usually much harder than the wood. So you end up sanding the wood, but not as much the glue. So you end up with a bit of a gully, and you'll find that after you finish the product, that there's a bit of a gully all, all the way around where you've done a repair. Now let me show you the best way of doing repairs like this. When it comes to cracks and knot holes, there are basically two kinds. And if you look here, you can see that there's a crack in this board here at the end. But if we flip over that board to the other side, you can probably see that there's a crack that goes all the way through. So that's one kind. See that crack goes all the way through that board. If you start filling that crack with the CA glue, Depending on how wide the crack is, there's a good chance that that CA glue is going to go all the way through. And if you were doing it on your workbench, you're going to end up gluing your wood to the workbench. Now, here's another crack. This one is much bigger, and you can see that there's actually a crack there because I can put my um, tool into it. But when I flip it over on the other side, there's no crack on the other side. So this is a crack that does not go all the way through. In fact, there isn't even a crack on the end of this one. And this is just a piece of scrap wood. Now what I'm not going to do, I'm not going to use a nozzle and try and fill that because you can't do a decent job. You're going to end up making more work for yourself if you use the nozzle, even with just a little bit off the top. You're far better off to use one of the nibs that come with, the tips that come with your CA glue. And in this case, I'm going to be using the medium thick because I want to start filling that hole with a glue that's going to sort of absorb and fill that hole. And your best way is to get in there with some magnifying glasses and get right into that crack and start filling that. You can see it going down there and start filling that crack like that. And you don't want to overfill that crack. If you can avoid overfilling it, you're far better off doing that. And as you go along, it's probably a good idea to spritz that from time to time. And that spritzing will evaporate and will not affect anything on the wood, but it will harden that CA glue as you're going along so that it's not going to get deeper and deeper. Now, I'm not going to finish this today, but I want you to see the process of how we go about doing this. And if you do it this way and keep filling a little bit and a little bit, you will avoid 
hours of sanding and possibly even ruining your project because of if you put too much glue on there, too much CA glue and harden it, you'll end up having a mess on there. Now, when it comes to sanding, rather than grabbing your random orbital sander like we would typically do, the best thing to sand your glue is to get a hard surface. In my case, I'm using an old sharpening stone and I have some uh, just whatever sandpaper you have and use that to go over top of your whatever it is that you filled whether it's a knot hole or a void and that way you have a much better chance of sanding off your CA glue first of all and not ruining the wood around it. So use that and you should get very good results. Well, and that concludes my video for today. Uh, lots of cool things. And once you start using CA glue in your workshop, you'll start to realize just how invaluable it is for just so many things. Now, I know today we've got lots of new woodworkers watching because every episode I get lots of new woodworkers watching. And those people often ask me, I, I'm confused with all the glues. What, what do you use? What should I use? I'm going to put the list of the things that I most use. And that may be relevant to you, maybe not to. Also in the description box and in the article on Woodwork Web along with this, I'm going to put a link to Starbond's new e-magazine called Meet the Makers. Um, it's a fun little online magazine. You can download it and have a look at it. But there's lots of really good information on CA glues in there as well. So I think you'll get lots of good value out of that as well. I'm Colin Cadet for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.